Hello. <clears throat> I'm Aaron Morton, minister here at Comox Valley Unitarian Fellowship. And I'm delighted to welcome you to our 17th Community Winter Solstice Celebration. This service was adapted from the Winter Solstice Celebration book and CD and has been augmented from various sources. The Comox Valley Unitarian Fellowship organizes and presents this event. We are a spiritual community with diverse spiritual, spiritual beliefs and guided by a set of eight principles. If you want to know more about us, please talk to anyone here on the stage or anybody with a name tag, and we'd be happy to tell you more. There's also information at the table at the back, I believe. We also warmly welcome you to join us for a meal after the service in the hall that's just in the room next door. This is a participatory event and, and con con contemplative. It's not a concert, so we ask you to withhold uh, applause. And we strongly encourage you to sing along where you feel called. There are some handouts with lyrics for some of the songs. There's also a family room just in there. You can go out this little door at the side. If you get the wiggles and you need to move around, feel free to go in there. And there's some coloring and other activities you can do there free for anybody of any age. And this is also a great time for you to check if you've turned off your phone um, or turned it to silent. <laughs> and then let us take a breath as we relax and settle into this service and I will light our sun candle. Now take a moment of meditation. Please close your eyes or maintain a soft gaze. You can look at your knees and we'll go inwards. It is almost time for night. It's almost night. The night is for stillness. Let us be still in the presence of night. It is the night after a long day. What has been done is done. What has not been done has not been done. Let it be.
Night is dark. Let our fears of the darkness, of the world, and of our lives be put to rest. Night is quiet. Let the quietness of peace enfold us, all dear to us and all who have no peace. We meet here at the still point of the turning year in a space between the worlds in this womb of sacred quietness to celebrate the solstice mysteries. Let the dark enfold you and embrace you. Let it rock you gently. Let go of all the care and worries of the world. Forget yourself like the hibernating animals and dormant plants. Be still, be still. I invite you now to open your eyes to the darkness of the room and the darker season. Blessed is the darkness, for in the darkness we conceive. Blessed is the light, for in the light we give birth. As conception is to birth, so darkness is to light. Know that both the darkness and the light, the sound and the silence, are sacred unto the divine, who is all creation. Imagine, if you will, a time maybe 50,000 years ago when people were first beginning to emerge from the long sleep into the conscious awareness of the world around them. And now they are noticing the passage of time. And just now they are noticing the coolness of the air and just now, perhaps one of them is noticing that the sun, which used to rise there and went high above over the earth, giving light and warmth for long periods, now it rises there and isn't as high and nearly as stay as long in the sky as it did before. Will it someday not come back at all? Will it someday move away from us? And we'll have to live our lives in darkness? This is the time of midwinter solstice, the time when the earth tilts away from the sun so that there is here in the northern hemisphere a fact that the sun's time is shorter and the night's time is longer.
In our culture, this time of year can be difficult. It's dark when we leave for work or school in the morning, and it is dark when we come home. We may feel alienated by the commercialism that the holidays have taken on. We may feel alone or lonely. We may have money worries. We may feel overwhelmed by family and friends. It's cold. It's dark. It's exhausting. We would hibernate if only the world would let us. And sometimes we feel as if we have gone into the underworld grieving, full of pain and fear. We wait alone in the darkness of these days, afraid that spring will not come again. Though my soul may set in darkness, it will rise in perfect light. I have loved the stars too fondly to be fearful of the night, to be fearful of the night. Richard S. Gilbert says, in the darkness we rest our bodies or our souls. We escape that which distracts and confuses us. We come face to face with ourselves. We come into the deep places of our being. Darkness is not merely the absence of light. Darkness is not simply an interval between days. Darkness is the softness of things, the blessed quiet of night. May we not bemoan the dark, but relish it. May we feel powerful in its presence and rejoice its mystical embrace. May we celebrate the deep and nurturing dark. Let us take another moment of meditation and consider what gifts can the darkness offer you this winter?
we pause in the holy quiet of the nourishing dark. We miss the sparkling daylight hours, the long days of brightness and activity. We yearn for their swift return and wonder if we can wait, or if our patience will at last give out. We forget the nourishing dark at our peril. There is mystery in the dark to be probed. There is adventure of that which cannot be known, cannot be seen, can only be experienced in the soul. There is deepness in the dark, impenetrable and inviting. And yet in the darkness, in the cold and the silence, we light sparks, one and then another and another. Together, a light, a way to be, and move in the world is renewed. As this season of sparkle and bright unfolds before us, the glimmering promises of hope, like the boxed jewels, awaiting an adoring light. May we hold fast to hope's active and patient possibilities. May we lift them high, that they might catch the light of our dreams and shine bright in our broken world. And may we instill hope's challenge in the hearts of our children, that they too will live it into meaning, pouring our lives into making it real for ourselves, for each other, for the world. May hope light the world this solstice. We now invite you to go inward for a few moments while you reflect on how can you let your light shine.
To lure the sun back to us, we light candles, we burn the Yule log, and yes, we decorate our houses with lights. Many religions have a sun child born at this time of year, a child who lights our way back to spring. Each child born gives us renewed hope for the world, but it's not just the children newly born who carry the light and renew our hope for the world. It's each and every one of us. In darkness, we can rest and reflect, and the light calls us to act. Each of us can use our light which, to help our world th thrive. We can join our lights with those of others. We can see this light, this hope in the world even through challenging times. We can see it in the hope of indigenous lands being returned. We can see it in the hope that calls people across Canada today calling for a permanent ceasefire in Gaza. Let us be called by our light, by our hope and our love to transform our world to peace. Oh, 
The solstice fire is lit and the candles are passed. The light of the new year's dawning lifts our heavy hearts and brings us hope and joy. We have taken a journey into the darkness of winter and traveled back into the light with the promise of spring yet to come. We have found our own light and as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give permission to others to shine their lights. We've discovered that our lights shine more brightly when we join them together. We now urge you to take it into the streets. Join with others' lights. Carry your light home. And as we take the light inside, think of how you can shine in this world. Find ways to bring your shine home to your families in your work to change our world, to bring peace and joy for all wherever we can. Now let us extinguish our candles and shine together. So we find ourselves wrapped by the season of wonder and light, the astonishment that as life can ignite our spirits, and we feel, if merely for a moment, that we are as we were meant to be, 
May we hold fast to this sliver of mystery. May we call ourselves back to it time and again until we are filled with the wonder that is our life, its hope, its peace, its joy, its love. These are all revolutionary acts in these times, infused then with all that we are. May our energies be given to the transformation of this world from despair to hope, from darkness into light, from fear into love. May we be bold, may we be daring, may we be love. Love lights the world this solstice. Thank you all for being with us, being part of this celebration this evening. Because this celebration replaces our regular service, and because as a spiritual community we rely on your free will offerings, we will have baskets at the back for you to make any offerings as you leave. Again, I encourage you to join us for a meal next door after the service. And with that, we're, we're going to end with a final song, Silent Night, Solstice Night. You may remember, you may recognize the tune. The words are in your handout. <laughs> and with that, let us honor the spirit within each of us. Let our lights be renewed. And let us share our blessings in this world. May it be so.